So WWDC 21 just streamed live on YouTube. Did you watch it? What did you think? They covered quite a lot, all software stuff which was expected as we've just had the new iPads and iMacs drop and they're still filling up my homepage feed but hey ho. So what did Apple announce at this year's event? Let's take a look. Tim took to the stage, emojis in the audience, clapping and cheering, it was a very interesting start and the first thing announced and the one that we all knew was coming, iOS 15 and with that a bunch of updates to apps and services. Firstly, FaceTime gets a refresh. Apparently when you are on the screen, the voice sounds like it comes from where the head is. They are saying that the update will also do a better job of voice isolation and cutting out background noise, which is good as this has been a problem since day one. There will also be a new grid view if you tend to have a group chat that should make things a little easier and you can now invite in your Android friends to the party. You will be able to make a FaceTime link to join a call which works on Android, Windows and web browsers. Now lastly on the FaceTime updates and something we've used a few times over lockdown, watch parties. I know Amazon offer it with their Prime Video but now Apple do too via FaceTime so you can chat, be on camera but also share content, videos, music and enjoy it together. Other tweets coming to iOS 15 is a new notification layout plus a focus tool. With focus you can set up modes for work and personal and that kind of thing. The iPhone uses on-device AI to try to pre-guess what notifications you want which could be good and help from distracting you from work with Instagram notifications of videos that have that song wow you can really dance they also spoke about a search engine type procedure that uses a deep neural network to scan photos across the internet and it will give you information on it they gave examples of a flower take a photo of it and it will tell you what type of flower it is I know others can do this already but it is super handy the next biggie and in itself makes you ask a lot of questions Apple wallet and UWB keys being added to them so Apple have teamed up with BMW and you will soon be able to unlock your car with your phone and drive off. It sounds good but security, reliability, it's early days but this could be a game changer. And I know a lot of us now have a bank card within our Apple wallet and use it daily. Apple are proposing to team up with a bunch of other brands to use these UB UWB keys in other ways. Mostly American firms that I'm not too sure on but I did see Disney so perhaps you will be able to use your phone rather than a magic band when turning up at the gates. Maps is getting a big update and and from the footage shown at the event, it's looking super sleek. Within cities now, details for commercial districts, marinas and more. Elevation, graphics and 3D landmarks which just brings the whole experience to life. Although I guess you're not meant to be enjoying what's going on screen too much if you're driving. One feature I'm really looking forward to as I use maps a lot but some of those inner city features won't cover many cities to start with. A couple of other bits were announced too, tweaks to viewing photos. The weather update has a refresh too. Plenty of other stuff came out of the event. Now it was pretty clear iOS 15 was the main event, but Apple did go through a number of other new things coming. And firstly, an update to the ever popular AirPods. There will now be a conversation boost feature that will help those that find it harder to hear, to hear things clearer and can reduce ambient noise in the background. Siri will soon be able to read notifications rather than just give you an alarm. It can also read notes like shopping lists while you're walking around the supermarket. Everyone's favorite tablet, the iPad is getting OS 15 too. Widgets on the home screen, just like you can have on your iPhone from the last update and something that's been on Android for years, but now comes to iPad. It was cool when it came to iPhone, better suited for iPad though I feel as it will actually help productivity a lot with bigger screen and all that. But let's not forget Android has been doing widgets for ages now. Also with the update a new way to multitask. There will be an icon in the middle of the screen or the top middle of the screen where you swipe down, you choose a new app and it will load up. Then you can hold certain apps down like emails and enlarge the email without leaving side by side mode. They also spoke about quick note which is exactly what it says on the tin. Auto translate which isn't new in the industry but handy to have and swift playgrounds for all of you coders out there which will help you create apps more seamlessly with things like auto code finishing and suggestions. Mac OS did get a mention too and there were new features coming to Apple's new Monterey OS which is the new OS found on Apple Mac products. Apple's biggest feature was universal control by far which gives users the ability to 
use a single mouse and keyboard across their iMac, their MacBook, and their iPad. It even allows users to use the touchpad and keyboard of their MacBook across other devices. And with this in mind, you can even drag and drop files between devices as well. So if you're working on an image on your iPad, for example, you can then drag it directly onto your iMac or into a Final Cut project. Alongside this, Monterey is also bringing you shortcuts, which have been previously seen on iPad, but it gives users the ability to save keystrokes and swipes and mouse clicks as a single shortcut. So now you can set a shortcut to open your favorite apps and play your favorite playlist at the same time. Airplay to Mac gives users the ability to share their screen on several Apple devices. So if you're working on an image on your iPad, you can share the screen on your iMac so other people can watch what you're doing, which works well for things like presentations if you're at work. It was also mentioned that the new M1 MacBook Pro can give you up to 17 hours of browsing and Safari has been given another overhaul with its design, so now it offers a less cluttered experience. You've got a new tab system that hides the tabs by matching the colors of the web page you're on, and also on iOS on your phone, tabs are now found at the bottom of the screen, so you can swipe between them, uh, swipe between the tabs with your thumb, and it hides the tab bar seamlessly when you scroll. It all looks very nice and definitely allows for an easier time getting through different web pages. And lastly, as we're talking about Safari, there are now extensions on iPad and iPhone, so you can enjoy things like Grammarly or Honey and all of the other extensions you use right on your portable devices. WWDC 21 was long. It was longer than most probably wanted, and this video could be 30 minutes long, but who wants to hang around for that amount of time? To finish off, Apple spoke about privacy and improving it for the user and further protects data from third-party software and pixels. Health, a bunch of updates revolved around that, which included being able to share your health data with your family and doctor and also tracks a little bit more data than before. One thing though I did think about when they were talking about the Apple Health and all of the updates with collecting data and things like that is how you're going to be sharing it with your doctor or your friends or your family. You have to really rely on your doctor and your friends and family having an Apple ecosystem to be able to receive the data. Now they showed examples of what this data will look like and you can go to your doctor and you can zap him your your health data that you've been tracking and things like this like there was a step counter or a, a way of being able to track your steps um to give you the ability to ensure you're not going to fall over um it's just called a steadiness the steadiness tracker um which means you're not going to fall over so but but then sending that to your doctor he's got to have this apple mac infrastructure set up on his end as well does my doctor have all of this i haven't got a clue i haven't gone to the doctors in ages and i don't know if it's just gonna it, if it'll be a lovely world that you could just go in and go here you go doctor here's my data but it's not gonna happen and i don't know how feasible it is to be able to say here you go doctor here's all of my health data that i've been tracking for the past god knows how long and they're going to be able to watch it or look at it on your phone and think oh, okay they're not going to touch your phone now because of covid are they so i don't know it just seems like something that's very much in its preliminary stages it's a nice thing to have and it's something that is going to be probably developed into the future you know it's probably going to come but at the moment it's it's not you not going to be used and i just sat there thinking as well during the whole family being able to track your data I mean, I can barely get, like my grandma, for example, I, you can barely get her to use Spotify on her phone. She barely has a phone in her hand. How are you going to expect her? Because, come on, to be honest with you, you're going to be tracking people with illnesses in your family or the elderly members of your family, right? So they're going to have to be on an Apple infrastructure again. They're going to have to be wearing an iWatch, getting them to remember to put on an iWatch every day so they can, you can track their heart rate. To, to track whether their heart rate's getting any faster. Is my grandma gonna put on a iWatch every morning so we can track her data? Probably not. And then you're gonna track their steps and you're gonna think, oh, well, they're, they're gonna fall over in uh, <laughs> in about a month's time. They'll probably fall over. Someone who's been walking wrong. What if you hurt your leg one day and you got a limp or you're on crutches? Your phone's gonna go haywire thinking, well, you're not working, you're not walking correctly, are you? Because um, we're detecting that you've got a bit of a limp, so be careful, because you're gonna fall over. You've got a broken leg. What are you gonna do? You've broken your leg, the phone's gonna go mental. I don't know right now how feasible it's all going to be with the type of tracking that's already in place. Yes, it's nice to see, and it's nice for your phone to say, oh, you're doing a good job, well done. It's like a nice pick-me-up in the morning to know that you've got, you, you, you're not gonna fall over in a month's time because you're limping. For your doctor, no. 
not yet anyway, not until Apple, the Apple sales team can convince all doctors in the world to switch to Apple Health. But they're the first ones to do it, right? It's a bragging right to say, we, we're tracking this. Oh, it feels like they're the first ones to do it. They're the only real tech giant that's talking about it. Other tech giants behind closed doors at health conventions and things like that might do, but Apple are the ones that are bringing it to the forefront of, of commercial tech. Yeah, maybe in the future, something will happen. Watch OS did get a mention, but nothing majorly new with that, except now you can view your smart cameras in your home with your Apple Watch, and there's some new workouts as well some Tai Chi was there and some Pilates workouts um, and, and also breathe tracking and it trains you how to breathe properly and it gives you a nice animation on the screen to calm you down. Not sure how useful this is going to be because if you're doing anything like breathing exercises or yoga, I'm very, very surprised if you're gonna be wanting to do this while learning how to breathe, looking into your iWatch, you know? So I'm not sure how useful that is going to be. A feature of watchOS though that did catch my eye is the ability to view your smart home CCTV cameras through the actual watch itself. And you can also view your uh, Apple uh, video doorbell. And there's also something on there, a bit of AI technology, which detects where the packages are left on your doorstep. Not a major thing here in the UK because couriers and delivery people don't leave packages on doorsteps it seems to be a very much an american thing but you've got the added security there that you will get a notification if the doorbell and your watch detects a package on the doorstep so hopefully doorstep snatchers or whatever they're called doorstop snatchers that steal parcels from people's doorsteps hopefully that'll be a thing in the past uh, just to give a bit of extra security around around that from Apple. And probably the biggest announcement that came out during the home section of WWDC 21 was the fact that Siri was coming to third-party devices and they showed an example of someone using Siri on their home thermostat, asking Siri to change the temperature, that kind of thing. So there was something that was also announced is that Apple are now backing something called Matter, which is a new smart home standard by the Connectivity Standards Alliance. I should really have a little tablet here. I should have a little iPad, the iPad here to just to read my notes, but it's a new um, smart home standard. So it essentially means that it gives developers and, and manufacturers an easier way of integrating their smart home products into HomeKit and you know Alexa, uh, Alexa and Google Home Assistant and stuff like that. But of course, Apple very much concentrated on their HomeKit. But that's what it is. It's just an easier way for developers and manufacturers to integrate into the Apple ecosystem because uh, it's about time, right? Apple very much stick, seem to very much stick to themselves. But now that they can uh, embrace more products coming on board, it's just a, a lot better experience for the end user. Well, there was a lot to get through or it certainly felt like it was a lot to get through. And hopefully we've picked up on all of the major updates and announcements from this year's WWDC. Let's chat about it in the comments below. What did you think about the event? What was missing? Don't forget, new iPhones due in September and maybe a new watch, but who knows? Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.